Please welcome the chair of the Easter Seals serving D.C., Maryland, and Virginia board, Janice Schiff, and the president and CEO, Lisa Reeves. Thank you, everyone. Please excuse my voice. I'll do the best I can. And our deepest thanks to our First Lady for her welcome message and her ongoing support throughout the year. As we think about heroes, it was through Ann Campbell and General John Campbell, who together we honored at last year's Advocacy Awards, that the First Lady came to know Easter Seals as an organization that military families will always be able to count on. I call out the Campbells as heroes. They continue to serve. Of course, General Campbell is serving and leading in Afghanistan. And they are continuing to make very personal sacrifices for all of us. And one very important reason so many people can count upon Easter Seals is more than 200 professional staff members of Easter Seals serving DC, Maryland, and Virginia. They are teachers, employment specialists, therapists, coaches, nurses, and all united by their dedication to, the meeting, to meeting the needs of those with disabilities and special needs. So, speaking of dedication, I have to thank someone who has spent the better part of the last 12 months being the leader of this event tonight. I only met, this isn't in the script, I only met Robin Portman about a year ago. Actually, we discovered we had another life together 30 years ago. Close your ears on that. But, but really only started working with Robin just a year ago, and she stood up because she imagined that if she did, the effort would have a meaningful change and create a meaningful trajectory in people's lives. Robin Portman, if you haven't noticed, is an extremely powerful individual. But she doesn't seek power, but she also doesn't sit on the sidelines. Her values and her beliefs are what drives her to the success that this event, and so many of you have said this to me who have been here over the years, 400 last year, 650 this year. We're not an event organization, by the way. We're a people organization. This is a means to an end, and that's what you are all help, helping us to accomplish. So she's done it with as much humility as anyone I have practically ever met. So Robin and our entire board knows that Easter Seals is the best investment that can be made in people's lives. And after tonight, I expect that you will know it too. I'd like to um, have all of the members of our professional staff and the board of Easter Seals serving Maryland, D.C. and Virginia to please rise so we can personally, all of us, thank you. So please rise. Okay, so my mother's a librarian, so I'm storytelling. And you know every story does have a beginning, a middle, and an end. Last year I shared the story that began in 2003 when General Coots, then Colonel Coots, who was the medical director at Walter Reed Hospital, he is personally a dad of young children, or he was a dad of young children himself, and he was increasingly concerned that many of the seriously wounded heroes that he was treating had young children who needed help, and they were languishing in the hospital. They were coming to DC, our city, and they were coming in great numbers to be with their wounded family member. It was a crisis, and lost in that crisis, General Coots knew were their children. Easter Seals stepped in. We offered 
and we continue to offer support, education, and respite for these children and these families impacted by war. But that was just the beginning of the story. We knew that while some wounded warriors would eventually recover and we had help and we would be able to help them with their reintegration into the civilian workforce, and you heard from Mike and you're going to hear a little more later, we also knew that others' injuries were, would be so severe that they may need lifelong care. And the heroes in their lives, their spouses, their parents, and even their children would be facing the most challenging experience of their lifetime because it wasn't going to end. It was going to be lifelong caregiving support. And we'll hear from Elizabeth Dole in a little bit because the issue of caregiving is certainly a significant issue around military families, but it's touching all of us. So just two weeks ago, I will say I was startled and pleased as I visited one of our 11 adult centers where we help people with disabilities. Because I met a young man who served in his early 20s in the early days of the Iraq War. So today, his hospitalizations and his surgeries and his rehabilitation are over. And he's 30 years old. And he will live his long life with many, many challenges. He deserves help, he deserves dignity, and he deserves our support. And his mom, a public school teacher, who is not just his mom anymore, she is his caregiver, and she needs our help as well. We can do this for both of them, and we will do it, and we are doing it. We can commit, and this is the most critical, critical thing I can say about Easter Seals. We've been here 100 years. We're going to be here for the next 100 years. We can't start and stop. No fits and starts at Easter Seals. We're here for people if we're serving them. So, you know, as, as we help and, you know, those who have served our nation, we're committed to helping them reclaim the very special and unique competencies that they bring to our society, our community, <clears throat> because we do want to help them recapture their rightful place in our society. Lisa, thank you. My fellow board members and I share the vision of Easter Seals to holistically address the evolving needs of these families and individuals. We're adamant that people with disabilities and their family can achieve independence and inclusion. And we wholeheartedly believe that when this happens, we all benefit from their ongoing contributions to society. I came to Easter Seals as a volunteer and as a philanthropist. What I've learned since I've come to Easter Seals has given me an entirely new perspective. I knew Easter Seals was the right thing to do. I didn't realize that it was the absolutely necessary thing to do as well. Today, we like to honor the caregivers, but ladies and gentlemen, as Rosalind Carter noted, there are only four kinds of people in the world. Those who have been caregivers, those who are currently caregivers, those who will be caregivers, and those who will need caregivers. <clears throat> Excuse me. Look around at your table and recognize that every person here will be somehow impacted by the caregiving crisis. This year, that happened to me when I discovered that both of my parents, who were fairly independent, both needed caregiving at the exact same time at a place that was not local to Washington. We know that one in 44 of boys born today will also be diagnosed with autism. We also know that one in eight baby boomers will be impacted by Alzheimer's disease. We also know that thousands of our neighbors and friends will be impacted in some way by long, long wars that are only now drawing to a close. Easter Seals is the mechanism, the best, the most effective 
way and powerful way to ensure that our friends, neighbors, family members not only have their basic needs met, but can go farther and can achieve independence while coping with their disabilities. Become included, contribute to society as we tap their immense potential. This is such an important point to, I can't, I can't say it enough. In short, if you don't need Easter seals today, you will need Easter seals tomorrow. I know this firsthand and Easter Seals will be there for you, and we have to make sure it continues to be there for you, as it has been, and in very, very personal and impactful way for me. That is personal, Janet. Okay, so I'll wrap this up with a quote from Teddy Roosevelt, who said, the best thing you can do is the right thing. The next best thing you can do is the wrong thing. But the worst thing, the absolute worst thing you can do is nothing. So ladies and gentlemen, by being here, you have done the best thing, and we thank you. So enjoy your evening.